This is an explanation of how to use the dash and basic controls on a 2018 or similar BMW S1000RR. This is the writer's manual that will come with a 2017 or a 2018 BMW S1000RR motorcycle. And this is what I'm going to be referencing today in the demonstration. This specific bike is actually a 2010, but it's been refitted with the 2018 engine and electronics. So everything that you'll see on dash operation is going to be the same that would apply to any 2017 or 2018 bike. Basics, obviously you turn the key, your dash lights up, and then you have your kill switch over here. So this would be in the kill position. This is on and then you push this to start, all right? And so if it's running, you push it off. This is the mode button. What it controls is the mode, so you can see now it's in race mode, and I can select it to slick, rain, sport, back to race, and then once I let off, it eventually goes to race. Now, if you happen to be driving the bike and you wanna switch modes, you have to, Press to where you want it, but then you have to, let's say you want to switch to rain, you have to pull in the clutch to get it to stick. This is the grip heater. Push it once to activate high, you can see the two dots, another time to put it in low, and another time to cycle back to off. This activates the grip heaters on both sides. Headlights are basic. They start in low, and you have to start the engine to be able to activate the high beams. You can flash them. Or you can flip it out to turn it on high or pull it back in for low. The horn button is located just below the blinker button. There's the horn sound. Blinker left. Push in to turn off. Blink the right. Push in to turn off. The hazard lights are self explanatory. With the bike not running, the ABS is blinking because the sensors haven't had a chance to recognize everything. If for some reason you want to shut your ABS off, you can hold this button until the light turns bright orange. Now you have no ABS. So be real sure that's what you want before you do that. If you want to turn it back on, you just hold the button down until it starts blinking or until it goes off if you happen to be riding. This is the cruise button. To activate cruise, push it to the right and that will turn it on. That allows this to move freely. You get to the speed you want, Pull it towards you to set it. Pull it towards you to decrease the speed. Push it away to increase the speed. If you hit the brakes and cancel it, then you can press forward again to resume it. On the dash, you'll see the green light come on and off, and then it'll go off when you click the switch off. For your shift assist, you let the clutch out to start like any normal time, but for upshifting, you have to be on the throttle and then you just kick the shifter and it'll automatically shift without pulling in the clutch. When you're downshifting, you have to be completely off the throttle to downshift. For the slick button, factory default is zero you can go all the way to negative seven, which is the least intervention or the most wheel slip. You can also go all the way up to plus seven, which is the most intervention and least wheel slip. I'll put mine back to zero. To activate the launch feature, be it a dead stop, press and hold the start button until you see the dash change, pin the throttle all the way, and then let out the clutch. It's gonna take some getting used to and it's hell on your clutch discs. The trip button, the top here, 
We'll cycle through the trip one miles, trip two miles, average MPG, average speed, full odometer, and the range on your fuel tank. If you're in, say, trip one, you can hold it down to reset to zero. Trip two, hold it down, reset to zero. Same with average MPG and average speed. You can press the set button to go to more of the race display. If you want to go back, you just press the trip button again. There's a lot of information and options in this menu, and it's a little bit cumbersome, so I'm going to go through it all at a high level first, basic operation, then we'll get into a little bit more detail. So if you hit the set button and it gives you your race display, you can hit it again. So basically set is pushing you through the menus and then your trip button goes back up one. So set goes through these and you end up back here at the race display. And then you can go to trip again. Now from set, let's go to race display. We're gonna to go to the next option is race info. You can hit the set button and hold it to enter whenever you see the word enter. Now what you do is you can cycle through these items with the set button. If you want to go back, you can hit the trip. It'll go back through. So you go through all the way and eventually, and now let's say that you want to delete them. Any of these items, if you want to do the item shown there, you hold the set button and it will do such as delete. Now we're on exit. So we're going to hold this set button and we'll exit back up to that high level. Now that was race info. The next one is setup menu. If we want to enter that, we hold the set button to enter it. And the first thing we get is yet another menu down for setup equipment. So we can hold the button, the set button and enter that. Now we have all these options we can go through and eventually, oops, sorry. And eventually you get up to set up equipment units, which is yet another level D. We hold the set button and we enter that. And now we can go through and modify these things. Oops. Now remember, if you go too far, you just hit trip and you go back one and there's exit. We hold the set button. We exit back up to the next level up. And we can cycle through. The next thing is exit. Again, hold down the set button, exit back up cycle into it now we have set up for racetrack so we enter that by holding the set button we have some more options we can mess with and eventually we have the exit we hold the set button and we exit back and we can reset factory and then we're eventually to the setup menu with the exit we hold the set button and we exit back up to the setup menu and then we're back to our race display, which again, we can just hit the trip button and we're back to the trip display. Now, if we want to go to the race info, we hit the set and hold it to enter. Here's all of our different parameters and our data on the race. That's the race info to see our statistics. So we're going to enter the setup menu. We're going to enter setup equipment. And we're going to adjust our clock. Hold the set down. Now we're going to move this to move it down to move it to 09. Hold set down again. Now it changed to the hours. The hours we're gonna change down to six because we had daylight savings time change. Now on the hours, you'll notice that the AM and PM is a function of the hours. In other words, you don't set it separately. Press it in when you're all done. And now you can escape out by pressing set again. Here's where you can set how bright you want your lights. 
So you hold the set button down. You can see it getting dimmer. We want full brightness. Hold set down again to take it. Press it once more. Set up equipment warning speed. Definitely don't want that, but if you do, you can hold set down, set it on. We don't want that though. Lamp off. So what this is gonna do is tell us, let's say you take your blinkers off. Normally it would tell you you have an issue. This way you can have it off so it doesn't mess with your screen to tell you, hey, you've got a blinker missing, especially if you take them off for racing. Display. This is the bank angle display. And I wanna have it on. Because I like seeing what kind of an angle I've got when I'm going around turns. Dynamic traction control tells us that we have it on. This will tell you if you want the brake or deceleration display on. It's an equipment unit. Here you can change your speed. If you want miles an hour or kilometers an hour, obviously we want miles an hour here in the States. Odometer in miles, temperature in Fahrenheit, miles per gallon, US, clock, we want a 12 hour, have to be at the exit, push and hold, we want our displays to be on in general. You always hold the set button for it to take. And it's going to exit. Set up racetrack, enter. The first one is the RPM on, so the light will start blinking at you at this RPM, give you some warning, and then this is where it's going to shut off. So you'll get the advance when the light starts blinking and then when it shuts off, you know it's time to shift. You can say how bright you want it. You can say the frequency of it. And again, all these are just holding down the set button, adjusting it up or down, whatever you want, and holding the set button so it takes. Once it stops blinking, move ahead. Now for this, this is if you want to show the best time. You can also show the last run. Or you can show the last and the best run. And you even have a fourth option for run and total. Version 5 is the run and best ever. And version 6 just gives you the run. This is the adjustment of the display duration in seconds. This has to do with the elapse between rounds. This has to do with fastest lap expected. This has to do with how you actually want to trigger, i.e. auto, external, or manual. Exit back out of here and out of here.
And then once you've exited out, you just hit trip back to the standard display. That should be all the basics. Now get out there and enjoy that S1K. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.